when I was doing this series about the CA glue finish on these blanks, I was wondering how thick is that CA glue actually building up? And then, to my surprise, one of the viewers sort of asked the same question and he was wondering too. So this series, maybe it's just going to be a one episode series, we'll see how it goes, is going to be, uh, yeah, let's measure it and see how many microns thick it is. And uh, what I've got here is a uh, mahogany blank that I just turned on this morning. And I've sanded it up to and including 1500 grit. Feels nice and smooth. And, and um, I'm going to start out with CA thin. And I've uh, made these up. This is going to be something different. I've never done this before, but the idea is it's got wax paper on this side and it's going to be sort of a disposable type thing. I'll just use it one time on this end and then I'll set it down and then I can turn it around use it one time on this end and I made 16 of them so I'm going to do 16 applications. I'll start out with thin give it maybe 5 of thin and I'm getting kind of low on thin but medium I've got almost a new bottle there so I'm going to uh, switch to medium and I also want to see if you know how, how well the medium will go on another thing I'm going to do a little bit different uh, from yesterday is that I'm only turning at about oh, 350 rpm right now I think I was turning a little bit too fast yesterday and possibly the centrifugal force it might have been causing the CA glue to sort of build up a little bit more uneven if you know what I mean as one of the viewers says, it's sort of like furrows and plowing a field. Well, that's kind of exactly what it felt like. However, the uh, micro mesh did sand that down surprisingly well. You might remember this. I don't know if you can see that shine, but it's pretty nice. Anyway, let's get at it. It is my plan here to not use the curing agent. However, if I find that this is taking all day, then I will. And I'm only going to show the very first application and the 16th one. Because I know you don't want to have it take all day. And number 16. Now all the previous ones, at least 2 through 15, I did use the curing agent. It was just taking too long. Now if you're wondering how this system worked, it actually worked really well. <laughs> Except for one time. But that was my fault. Now here's a tip for you. And if ever you're going to cut something that's round with a high speed blade like this, it's extremely important that you're holding it as tight into the corner as possible. The reason being is it could sort of grab a little bit, start to rotate like this, and once it starts it just keeps going and you're going to have a humongous catch. So anyway, I uh, didn't have the camera running while I was doing this because I wanted to give my full concentration to what I'm doing here. And um, besides, there's some squeamish people out there. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, what I did was, as soon as I got past the cut, I, uh, with my knee, turned off the saw and let it coast to a stop before I brought it back. Anyway, it's done. Now there is one more thing, actually two or three more things. I was wearing my face protection. Also, I was pushing it through very, very slowly. And thirdly, while I was pushing down into the corner, I was slightly pulling out with my fingers so that in the event the piece 
should suddenly disappear. My fingers go away from the spinning blade, not into it. Just thought I'd make that clear. Now I realize that some of you want to see how good was the cut. Well, it came out really well. And except for a little bit of a uh, tear out right there, uh, it came out, like I say, really well. Now, it's going to have to be magnified a lot more than this in order to see this layer. I can just barely see it here. I'm going to practice with the one that has the little chip on it. And it doesn't matter if the jaws damage the outside there. It's only the very end that we're concerned about here. Okay, that should hold. Now my plan here is to hold sandpaper flat against the end as it's spinning. I'm not going to round it over. I'm going to try and keep it reasonably flat. And uh, this is 800 grit. I'll start off with that. And then I'll finish off with 1500 grit and it should polish it pretty smooth. At least that's the plan. Here's hoping sanding like that made it better and not worse. I'm going to move a light around and see if I can get it to reflect right off the top of everything there. Well, sitting here right now editing out this clip, I'm just a little bit disappointed. I think it almost looked better before. I used to have a glass slide, like a microscope slide, and glued on that thing was a translucent or transparent micron ruler. I can't find it. I've looked in all the places where I would normally have put something like that, and I know I wouldn't throw it out. Can't find it. It's something like this, only, uh, only a lot smaller and uh, much more accurate for this sort of thing. Now what I can do is I can probably make use of the graduations that are on this right here. These will be fairly accurate. It, it won't be as good. But you know that's going to have to be tomorrow. And uh, I'll get this adapter in that camera and then we'll put it into this microscope and hopefully we're going to be able to uh, measure the thickness of the CA glue coating. And if this one isn't strong enough, I do have one that's stronger, but it's not as bright. This is the one I use in my workshop. Great microscope for a workshop. Anyway, see you tomorrow.